Hey guys, what's good? This is Andre and today we're gonna look at a few different things. We're gonna look at NetGas, just have another take at what we discussed yesterday. We're gonna look at WTI and then I want to look at XLE, at the broader ETF that covers energy and just look at how that is shaping up. Then we move from energy overall and just look at sugar, silver, and then we're going to be looking at a couple of uh, Forex pairs. We're gonna look at Aussie yen, pound yen, Aussie dollar and uh, dollar Swiss franc. Obviously, I'm gonna leave timestamps below, so jump ahead to whatever interests you guys and let me know in the comment section below if you need any further help. Thank you so much for your support on yesterday's videos. Your likes and subscribes definitely help me understand what type of content you guys need. So definitely drop a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's content as well. Let's jump into these guys. On NatGas, I'm gonna say what I said yesterday as well. We are long from just below here at roughly 22.26. So with that in mind, um, we are coming against resistance here. We got rejected by, uh, from the 40 day moving average that I usually use. And then we are obviously getting rejected by this trend line. I think the hypothetical way we're gonna end up trading here is breaking above, retesting this from above somewhere around here, maybe uh, a 50% FIB somewhere, and then moving forward. I don't think this is gonna be a straight line that we um, manage to just skyrocket here. Nothing ever goes in a straight line. But hypothetically, we have this as an initial uh, take profit, the 2.61 range. Then we have the $3 range. That's gonna be a really important one. And then let's see where from, from that point. Moving on here, let's take a look at WTI. Guys, you know what? I want to move on the weekly and tell you what I don't like. I want to start with what I don't like. First off, you guys know that the, the markets are always uh, forward looking. And so if you look at every single year, what happens is that roughly March through June tends to be, or through May at least, and actually let's switch back to the daily because you can see it clearer. And then I'm gonna show you what I wanted to show you for the weekly. But March through roughly May to June sometimes, tends to be uh, outperforming. If we look at every single year, except for the COVID year, obviously, you can see things starting to pick up in March and then starting to falter sometime in June. Every single time this happens. Now we are hypothetically at the back end of that seasonality, that strong seasonality, and because the market is uh, forward looking, that's what's happening. Um, what I also don't like, guys, is this massive crossover of the 18 and 40 moving averages on the weekly. I absolutely hate the way this is shaping up to be. I'm not a huge fan of the MACD either. I just don't see the long term trend here being something that's bullish. I think it's uh, it's gonna have to do a lot of proving itself out before we can uh, move higher. Now, obviously, this is something that's tightly correlated to news and supply demand and obviously OPEC is such an interesting beast that they basically make up their own rules of how much they're gonna um, put on out there on the market and so with that in mind we can obviously establish a couple of really important uh, areas to look out for that being said I wouldn't probably touch WTI for the long side from here and I don't think I would short it either. If we can get a run up to the 200 day moving average, I think that could be an interesting confluence of uh, maybe some Fibonacci areas, maybe a trend line. It really depends on when we reach that point. For now, I would probably not touch this to be completely honest with you. I would probably only ever look at it if we can get a confluence of let's say this range over here where we retest the trend line, we hypothetically retest the moving average, and then we also retest this 0.23 FIB from over here. I wouldn't do anything else for the time being. I think uh, we're kind of diddling in the middle uh, in this range. Cool. Moving over to the XLE, so the spider sector of the S&P 500 for energy. I don't like the way this is shaping up to look like. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, if we take a look on the weekly, uh, this looks even worse. Uh, we have a MACD that keeps uh, falling. And then if we look at the price action alone, we can see that we've been making higher lows, but we haven't been able to make higher highs for quite a while here. Now, this looks like either a continuation or a topping formation. We can call it a triangle, 
loosely um, and maybe we can even call it the the big head and shoulder uh, type pattern right we can say that this is kind of a, a left shoulder this is kind of a head and maybe we're forming a right shoulder it's nothing super precise it's definitely more of a a Frankenstein type head and shoulder, maybe a complex one, but still it's either a continuation or a topping pattern. The way you trade these is after a break above. So I wouldn't touch this unless we get a break above this moving average or a break below the neckline. If we get a break below the neckline, it's gonna be free fall probably until at roughly $60. Moving from XLE guys, let's take a look at sugar. So we've been short sugar for a while. I can see it's having a, a, a half decent day today. As you guys can see, we have the levels drawn in here. Uh, we are basically waiting for sugar to retrace back into this uh, 38 fib, at which point I'm probably gonna take either all profits or partial profits. I would love for it to go back all the way down to 23 uh, and retaste the, the 0.5 fib that I have in here, but that might be a bit optimistic and I'm not willing to take the risk. So I'm probably gonna let it uh, slide down to 24 and take some profits there. I think this is the plan that I want to go with for right now. I wouldn't trade this long or short from this area, but for any of you guys that are already in a short trade, I think it has some ways to go. After an initial retracement into uh, probably the 18 moving average on the weekly, so I would say that it's gonna meet up roughly at the 32 fib we should wait for a retracement into uh, the downward trend line and then we're probably going to be trading it back lower either to the 0.5 fib or maybe to the golden pocket of the fib um, that's my plan for for sugar at least let's move on to silver here guys with silver it's a pretty similar situation uh, first off apologies for the very messy chart very messy <laughs> so i think for silver here we're probably gonna see it retrace back into this demand area if not back all the way into the bottom trend line of the channel here we have broken below the middle of the channel we have retested it from the downside so i think the next move here is gonna be lower i do have a small short position on silver long term though i think the trend is up Moving on here guys, let's take a look at Forex and we're gonna have Aussie Yen for the first one. Aussie Yen guys, I would love to see this move lower from here. We took it short from the top of this channel. It's also a supply zone on the weekly, a pretty important one. So we're now going to be waiting for it to retrace back at least into the 91 range here, if not lower. The next one would be Pound Yen guys. The British Pound was extremely stubborn, it kept going up, but we finally got a break below we're going to be waiting for a retest of some sort so we want to get that one two three guys we want to get the one the two of some sorts and then the three to confirm that we've broken below this uh, previously made low as you guys can see here we got the one but we never got the two and the three so that's why it's really important to wait we already took a couple of shorts here but um, i would definitely increase my position on a successful creation of a two and a successful confirmation of a lower low that that would be interesting and then i think that we can hypothetically move all the way down to 165 at least if not retest uh, the 161 range of this trend line over here. Last couple guys, if you uh, withheld so far your absolute champions, we have the Aussie USD over here. Again, very messy chart. I do apologize for that. This looks strikingly like a bear flag, guys. We have the pole over here and then we've created the flag on the weekly now if this does confirm being a bear flag we're going to be going down quite far to retest the 0.61 range over here if it doesn't confirm that we're in big trouble i am short this position and i'm looking at this trend line here if it breaks above this trend line i'm gonna have to stop loss um, but if it doesn't i'm still adding for the time being because i think this still has big potential to go lower significantly the macd on the weekly looks bad um, and then just the setup overall on the daily doesn't look encouraging at all we're making lower highs and lower lows for now the last one guys we have the dollar uh, swiss franc 
<laughs> this pair has been struggling for the longest time. As you guys can see, uh, we are finally breaking above this trend line. And again, we're looking for that one, two, three guys. We have taken an initial short, an initial long, sorry, from the 90 to five area, give or take. We are look, we have made the one, we have made the two, we are looking now for the three. And once we manage to create a higher high past this initial peak that we had a few days ago, um, we are definitely going to be able to step on the gas here and uh, and go with it. I also love the fact that the 18 is moving, is crossing above the 40. And then on the weekly, if we have a look, the 18 uh, moving average has reduced slope. So that's a positive as well. I don't like the fact that it's still going down, but I do like the way the MACD is looking. It's starting to crouch over. And I think this is gonna be uh, a potential good long. That's all for today, guys. You're absolute champions. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. Uh, I post a lot of really good quality content and a lot of free one as well. You don't need to pay for it. Just check it out. I post daily. Sure, if you pay five bucks for it, you're gonna get even more, but even the freemium is pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna catch you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.